Look carefully, this is the saber-toothed tiger, which has been extinct for tens of thousands of years, with a big bloody mouth and long thin fangs, known as one of the most ferocious land beasts. When it saw humans, it pounced on them without hesitation, but it had lost its strength and could no longer withstand. The damage caused by the steel bullets, the three humans were able to hide under the cliff by relying on it for this block. While evading the saber-toothed tiger's pursuit, the heroine Abby looked up at the sky, perplexed, how could she not figure it out? Why would she encounter the legendary ancient beast here? Just two days ago, she inadvertently fell into a sudden sinkhole, through a green light, to this magical place. Her son was unfortunately bitten by the ancient giant wolf, and his life was in danger. Abby had to come to the dangerous plane to find medicine, although they temporarily stopped the pursuit. Who knows what happened to the saber-toothed tiger? There is no ambush in the vicinity. Abby's son could not afford to wait long, so she and the other two companions, David and Blackie, climbed out of the cliff and went in the direction of the camp in the night. Who knew that the saber-toothed tiger really did not go far? David was caught off guard and was swooped down the cliff by the saber-toothed tiger. The remaining small black dog and Abby wanted to escape, but were soon stopped in their tracks, only to see it immediately jump up against a hungry tiger and not eat. The two survivors arrived, not thinking about the trap or who set it up, and hurriedly left the scene to find David's whereabouts. They had no intention of abandoning their teammates, and besides, the bat bag containing the drugs was still on David's body. It was not until early the next morning that David was finally found at the bottom of the cliff, collapsed and unconscious. His spine was badly injured, and even walking alone was a problem, so Abby and Blackie had to help him walk with difficulty. But David felt that this was too slow, and would probably delay the treatment of Abby's son, so he decided to let Abby go first and Blackie stay behind to look after him. Abby also did not resist, grabbed the backpack, and ran quickly towards the cab. When his son George fell into a coma, his life was in danger. But Abby arrived and immediately gave him antibiotics, which made him feel a little better. At this time, Riley, who had been caring for George, learned of her father's injuries. She was so annoyed that Abby left her father's behavior behind and darted out. Just when she was considering whether to enter the wilderness to look for her father, her best friend Ollie came over and told her that she had discovered a shocking secret. Just a short while ago, a man was suddenly attacked by a giant ancient wolf almost instantly losing his ability to resist. And then he was taken by the giant ancient wolf. His daughter, Curly's sister, could not bear to see the death and decided to go deep into the wilderness to retrieve her father. The kind-hearted Ollie saw the situation and immediately said that he wanted to go with him. Luckily, he was not attacked by wild animals along the way. Afterward, Ollie found a group of camels speeding across the plains, looking like they were about to run into the asphalt lake ahead. Ollie rushed over to stop the scene which saved the eight camels. Ali suddenly remembered but was soon interrupted by his curly-haired sister because he had found his father's body not far away. What makes people think this is that the body was placed in the middle of a pile of strange cities, like some kind of trap. The curly-haired sister did not have time to think about what it was. She just wanted to bury his father as soon as possible. The two then returned to the camp again. It was then that Ali remembered about the asphalt lake, which he told Riley. This time last year, Eight ancient camel bones were found in the La Brie asphalt pit in Los Angeles, and experts judged them to be from 10. Zero BS, C, through the carbon identification of the camel skulls. Just now, Ollie happened to save the eight camels that should have washed into the asphalt lake, and the bones found in the La Brie asphalt pit are most likely theirs. If the inference is correct, then the location they are in now is the suburbs of Los Angeles in 10,000 BC. Riley was surprised to hear this, but at this point, he couldn't care less. Riley was about to go to the plains to look for his injured father when he saw him in the small black car with a strange man's help, and Riley immediately shed tears of joy even with Abby's sexual force or suffering a lot. It turns out that right after Abby left, Lackey was left alone to support David, which seems more strenuous. A section of the group also kept coughing. David immediately saw that he should be sick, but Blackie strongly denied it, seeing that the sky would be dark. David also did not ask further questions suggesting that Blackie left himself alone to go back to camp. At that moment, a cold-faced man appeared not far from the jungle. The good news is that the other side does not have bad people. With his assistance, we successfully returned David to the camp. The man, named Dolly, claimed to have woken up in the wilderness after falling from the sinkhole. Dolly was found alone after the crowd dispersed by the police ponytail sister, who turned out to be Dolly's mother. However, looking at the conversation between the two, 
the mother and son seemed to have a lot of conflict when the crowd carried David into the bus to recuperate. Abby's son George also woke up. It looks like it should be nothing life-threatening. Everything is moving in a good direction. Abby's husband, Kevin, had no intention of giving up on the search and rescue outside the sinkhole. He saw on TV the drive. Shin, a paleontologist, had determined that the giant bird that flew out of the sinkhole belonged to an ancient creature and that fossils of a similar species had been found in the La Bretar pits before. Kevin held his wife's wedding ring, assuming that his wife, who had fallen into the sinkhole, would not be there as well. So he immediately found Drive, Shin, praying for help to do a carbon test on the wedding ring to identify the year of the ring. If he was also from ancient times, then it would prove that his wife was also from that era. But before the identification results came out, Gavin was approached by Homeland Security. He was taken to a secret base. It was only when he saw Anna, the commander in charge of the sinkhole and the rescue work, and took out his wedding ring that it dawned on him. Anna will be sinking into the discovery of a strange green light, which she will report to superiors. And she will want to arrange for personnel to investigate some of it just in the morning. But the higher-ups believe that the green light behind the location of the danger is a reason to go in. Unless you can prove what is inside the green light. At this time, Anna remembered that Gavin claimed to be able to see the scene in the green light. So she sent people to investigate his background and the implementation of round-the-clock tracking. This trick really works. Anna soon found a clue, namely, Gavin's wife's wedding ring. Drive, Shen's identification of the ring from 10,000 BC via the element of carbon is sufficient proof that Gavin's wife teleported back through the green light. In ancient times, what was even more surprising was that the ring was found by Gavin through a vision, indicating that Gavin, indeed, was able to see the world behind the green light. Anna then broke a shocking story on the day Gavin crashed. Not far from him in the desert, there was also a sinkhole, and the same green light was found at the bottom of the pit. This led Gavin instantly remember that he had seen a flash of green light before the crash and then passed out. When he woke up again, he was lying in the hospital, and from time to time, he could see the wilderness, the woods, and other visions. The doctor explained that this was a concussion and its after effects, but Gavin felt that things were far from simple. Anna was convinced of Gavin's claim that Gavin was the only one who could see the green light the world behind him, and that it was possible that the crash had caused him to have some kind of connection with the parallel world. He then took Gavin to a huge storage room, where there was a strangely shaped plane. It turned out that when the sinkhole appeared in the desert a few years ago, they began to develop, in secret, a flying machine that could enter the sinkhole. Now Gavin's appearance was a suitable opportunity. Anna is ready to arrange for Gavin to lead the team into the green light to explore. In the end, this may become the history of mankind and the greatest discovery. The above is the entire content of Lawbury episode 2. Deep in the ancient times of the survivors, how will they survive here with such difficulty? Search and rescue personnel will be able to successfully enter and rescue them. If you want to know the answer, remember to stay tuned. We will see you next time.